last um, Sunday, as we were working in the book of First Chronicles, chapter sixteen, um, yeah, First Chronicles, chapter sixteen, <clears throat> uh, we um, the Lord brought us to a place where we reflected on what David had done in order to uh, properly align Israel, and it was an example for not only Israel but an example for us on the effectiveness of remembering God's blessings in the past and praising him for those, and then also knowing, recognizing what God is doing in the present and praising him for those. And so in the, I didn't, I'll be honest with you, I didn't plan it before the class. I just knew what we were going to, what we were going to talk about. The Lord takes over class every night. And that particular night he told me to share with all of us the necessity for us doing an exercise. And that exercise is doing a praise journal. And the praise journal was simply to daily, um, at whatever time, you know, was convenient, to, to think about and be deliberate about giving God praise for his past blessings and giving God praise for his current blessings. Uh, the purpose of the journal was to be deliberate, to get us in the habit of a practice of recognizing that God is worthy to be praised, not just an amen or a thank you, Lord, which is good. Don't get me wrong, or hallelujah. But God has individually blessed us. The reason why Israel had to do what was needed to do what they did was because Israel was unique to God. And here's the truth. Each of us are unique to God as well. And so our praise to God is unlike anybody else. And I don't care if y'all, you in the same house, care if you brother and sister. The reality is God has blessed us uniquely in each way. And so because of that, God is worthy to be praised uniquely by each of us as individual believers. And so that was the purpose of the journal. And I pray that even after the night, those that we can, I can't even say we can, we can, we continue to keep a journal because I believe the journal, the praise journal will keep us from falling in some of the sorrow uh, that happens in our lives as we forget what God um, has done for us. Uh, and it will allow us to be rec- recognized that God is able to do whatever we need because he has a track record of deliverance. He has a track record of blessings. He has a track record of mercy. He has a track record of justice. And so our praise journals will put us in a position where we'll be aware of those things. And I do believe without a doubt, because it's just in my experience this week, I remember things I'd forgotten and was aware of some stuff I didn't realize was a blessing. And so I pray that it happened to us. So the purpose of the beginning of fast, so we're going to do a little bit of work. So tonight, <laughs> give me a little bit of extra time in the end. Don't clock out. But I would like, at the very beginning of this class, that um, those who are desirous or willing would um, would give a testimony if, if God has given you one. And not to say that you didn't have no testimony. Maybe if you want to share a testimony, put it like that, then we would like you to do it. If you're on the phone line, uh, I think Minister McLeod and Sister Val got a process. And I'm just going to ask Sister Val if you would just announce whoever's going first. Let's, let's do the phone first. Um, let's, whoever's on the phone on the phone line, if you would um, jump in there and um, Val, if you would facilitate the first few people, and, and after the third, if, if, if there's one or three people, take a pause after the first three and then and swing it back to me. So, Sister all Val, right. you get us going. Okay, good evening, Pastor Thomas. We are all blessed and highly favored today, but we have Deacon Jordan who wants to share his testimony with us right now. Deacon Jordan. Good evening. Good evening, Dean. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, I, I actually didn't have a testimony, but it'll roll into one once I get started. I just want to <laughs> ask everybody hear that message this morning. Yes. Did everybody hear God speaking this morning in the service this morning? Because that was a great message. That was a powerful message. And it's been in my mind ever since I, all day long, you know, and I just wanted to find out what everybody listening today. And I just want to say my testimony is God is truly good. Truly good. Because God has met me at every point of my needs. He has blessed me more than I can imagine. Because I'm looking at my wife when she couldn't eat. She couldn't sleep. But she can sleep, she can eat, and she was reading on the phone this morning. God did that. And here I am, here I am, almost 80 years old, and I still can do for myself. Clothes pretty much in my right mind. But God did that, nobody else. I don't give no praise and no honor to nobody but God. Even when I was in my sin, 
God kept me. He kept me. The reason why I'm still here, because I wasn't, I was trying to kill myself when the things that I was doing, but he held on to me. And every time I got to going too far, he always talked to me and tell me, wait a minute now, that's a line you said you wasn't going to cross. That's my line. Don't go over that. You can get up to that, but you don't go over it. And then when he, he, I was driving my car at 7 o'clock in the morning, and when he told me, I had to make a choice. He spoke to me three times, and that third time I knew who it was. And I stopped doing what I was doing. That that time, I heard my brother. I just wanted to encourage my brother. He said he had a testimony tomorrow, but tomorrow is not promised. He needs to testify right now, today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Testify now. Why the blood mm -hmm. running warm in his land? Because tomorrow, vain, because tomorrow is not promised to you. So don't fear. He said, don't fear. You have a testimony. Speak up. If he doesn't do something for you, don't wait till tomorrow because it's too good. You can't hold it. Mm -hmm. You can't hold it. You gotta, you gotta say it now. Say it now. Cause tomorrow it'll be done faded away. That's, that's, that's all I know. I went too long, but I'm getting off here. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have a right, Thank you, Dee. Thank you so much, Dee. <laughs> thank you, Dee. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. From Thomas, that's the only yeah. one that had a that's the only one that had a testimony this evening. I guess the other ones just gonna keep theirs in their heart. Oh, I thought that, uh, Sister Lyons had something, didn't she? She never called in. Sister so, Lyons, you on the you on Zoom? You said she had one, but she was not called in on the phone. Let me see if I can find a track of that. I think she on Zoom. And she said she got one. Let's see. Right. She here. Let me let me unmute her. Hold on. Miss D, you want to do a testimony? Some of you don't have to. Miss B? Hold on. I'm you want to do a testimony? She would. Okay. Okay. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Could you all hear me on the phone line in the Zoom? Yeah, I don't hear you on Zoom. I'm trying to, hold on, hold on. I'm going to unmute you on Zoom. Hold on. Okay, we have you on the phone line. Okay, you got okay, me. Okay, well, hold on, hold on. Sister Reese, can you um, unmute? Unmute Sister Lyons. I, for some reason, I, I should be able to do it, but I don't know how I'm doing it wrong. I think I see Sister Reese on here. I have a name on here on the screen. Hold on one second. Yeah. All right. Now, Ms. McFadden, do you have you don't have the Zoom kit, um, uh, control, do you? No, I believe Kimberly lost in as the I think she lost you in as the host. I thought. All right. Well, she did, and I, I'm probably just uh, hold on. But I'm gonna get it now. We're gonna get it now. So, okay, Charles, I'm unmuted. I'm unmuted. Can you hear me on Zoom? Not yet. No, uh, we can hear you. Uh, on, we hear you on the phone line. Okay, as long as oh, y'all can hear now. me on the phone line, and tell so you all can hear me on Zoom. It's okay. I don't have to show my face. I'm just going to let go of the seat. Okay. Okay. Sister Lyons. Sister Lyons. Yeah. You don't have to share your face. You just unmute the, the, the one where it says, um, you know, the one where it says microphone. microphone. But you can keep your face uh, covered up. That's okay. So where it says well, you, you see the microphone, just click on that. And take it off. Well, some of them do all right, but I'm finna talk. As long as y'all can just hear my voice, it doesn't matter. <laughs> oh. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. You, know I'm what? Saying, you all, I want to thank God who is the head of my life at all times. When I say at all yeah. times, yeah. all times. Because yeah. God has yeah. got me from a mighty long way. And when it comes all right. to testimonies, yeah. I got a lot of testimonies. Hallelujah. Right. A lot of right. testimony, because God is good all the time. All the time. time. And I've been yeah. doing this pandemic. You know, I've been on the expectation line since the expectation line started. Because I want to get testing for God. This is an ongoing testing for me. It's an ongoing never stop for God called me on. It never stops. And I want to make y'all know 
The God yeah. brought me from a mighty long way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God right. had brought right. me out of additional drugs. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Depression. Hallelujah. Suicidal. Hallelujah. Thank you. And when I thank tell you. y'all, I don't have to And I thank God for God. My God is God is God. Oh, no. And I have a angel. A lot of God sent us angels, y'all. Don't get it twisted. Now, God sent an angel in my life, and that's God's the promise. Hallelujah. And I Hallelujah. And I this church. And I yeah. this church. But my God, I observe it. I can see it in the temple. I have nothing but the spirit. Hallelujah. And I give God all the honor and glory. And I yeah. give it to my pastor all the soul. Because he's a yeah. gift of God. Yeah, he's a gift, y'all. And I yeah. have to get out there and say, when he first come out, I observe this. He say, move me out the way. Hallelujah. And I've never been to a church where they say, the pastor say, move me out the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He say, move Thank me you, out Jesus. the way. Yeah. So I can speak. So God yeah. can speak to me, so I can speak to y'all. And that's what I'm yeah. trying to do it today. Speak to everybody, everybody. I'm going to tell y'all this stuff from all the way right here. You know, like I said, God is good. He's been good. He's going to continue to be good. Hallelujah. And that's what oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. That's what I have to say. <laughs> we had my grandchildren on Tuesday. A back to school little barbecue. These little kids, y'all. Hallelujah. They had a bounce off. So it's two kids, boom, you're right in front of me. Right directly in front of me. And I have called the dog pounds on my neighbor's house, you know, because they always get fat, right? Did y'all hear me? Yes. Okay. They always get out. So on Tuesday, the, the owner wasn't there. The, the dog came out the door and strutted over here to my house. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The children was in the back house. We had to run. They chased us in the back to my backyard. We had to run in the back door. They had to go in the back door. They had little dogs in the hand. And that's what they was after. They were off the way. That's what you Hallelujah. But the dog had something different, y'all. When I tell y'all, the dude down charged us just like this, and they were all on this 11 year old girl. I don't love her. I don't love her, hallelujah, hallelujah. But when I turn y'all, and I kick this house of knowing, but all oh, I do, Pastor, everybody, you have to do it. If you trust in God, you got to be faithful, be obedient. Hallelujah. I keep this all alone. I ask God to keep all the air and all the danger away. No way to fall against us. I want to know how to be for the neighbor, for everybody. And when I tell y'all, we did all we can to try to get these dogs out there, no good luck. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So I had to pray. I had to pray. And I had to ask God to keep on driving. Speak to my heart, Lord. Speak to me. Speak to me. And I had to tell my God to shoot in the air. She said, I'm going to go. She said, I'm going to go. 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 i God said, shoot them. Shoot them. She said, and shoot both of them and ran out the porch. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got a problem up in here that God blessed me with. And when I tell you, when I'm gone, ran out that porch, and we brought that child in the house, I'm going straight to the front room. While we waiting on the police and all that, but God is powerful. Hallelujah. Like Dr. said today, God is the police. God is the ambulance. God is everything. Hallelujah. And I brought that child in here to start praying and what he didn't know she was in my prayer room. Hallelujah. And that's good now. The dog didn't go. They did not go. He hung no harm up, y'all. Hallelujah. 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 H
God, in the bite of open. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you. And we'll get them on the edge of the stretches on them. They put on clothes, oh, God. But they did not eat it up. And God was protected by God up in here. That's why, y'all know why? Because I serve the path of God. Oh, God. Be in a part of God. Now, I don't even need to go to church, but what's this going on in the Samaritan church? Hallelujah. So, keep praying to me. Keep praying to me. Give a strong relationship with yes, God. Yes, Pick yes, up that yes. Bible. Read your scripture. Don't worry about that. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Yes, yes. Don't worry about that. You have to. I have to read it every day, morning, noon, and night. And I shout Thank all you. over the place. I don't care if I'm in the street. I shout. But when I tell y'all, the God showed up and showed up, y'all always do. The next morning I went out there and I had a bit bottle of oil. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Like I say, God is my daddy. He got me outside. I went from one neighbor house all the way down. With their all. Yeah. All the way to my yard to the next neighbor hands because they see your skeleton, you know. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. I ran my whole house down again, Lord. From the inside to the outside of my baby. That means the man all. I can use the man. But that ain't gone yet. He pulled up with the man all. That's all right. And I went That's out right. in the backyard. Hallelujah. Because I don't want to look fear in me. But I had to remember God say, you feel nobody but me. And I say, you feel back there, I tell Captain down there, say, you go back out there. Go back out there. And I know that the God is saying, well, hallelujah. And I go out there once right a day, and the devil is the night. And when I say it now, God is so good. He's 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 so good. Hallelujah. 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 Everybody. Everybody is pray for him. So many people are coming down. God, no, it ain't me. It's God. Answer me for prayer. I might put them on the poor line. On the amplification line. Hallelujah. They still on this journey with us, y'all. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank I you. ain't going to come in the day. I'm 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 going to come in the I don't want to hear nothing else. I'm just, I got to pray. And I went to pray for him. I said, watch God. Watch God. Why can't you bring your baby out? Just watch it. I do have to keep praying. I just have to trust him. I said, watch God. Who told me not to cheat? The hell thinks you're talking to God. I know I'm a witness. So now, I'll tell you what you can tell me that testimony. Don't take it for granted. Please don't. God is sending you signs. It's sending you signs to get a positive relationship with him. Pastor, y'all, I thank y'all. I love y'all. I love all my mm-hmm. prayer warriors. I love God. You don't know God because I pray for them too. You don't get that thing off because it's always open when you get ready. When you get ready because I'm going to be ready to go and talk about me. And I'm glad yeah. I'm doing this, and I'm continuing to be obedient to God. Now, he has brought somebody yeah. long way. I know the picture. Oh, hey. You got to hear me. I ain't going to be on the wall over here, so thank God. No, 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 I can't. Oh, my spirit, I'm going to And I just say, y'all, just keep holding on. Keep yeah. holding on to pray to God. Yeah. Yes. Read the scripture. Read the scripture. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God, Amen. 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 Amen.
I thank, thank you, you, so much. Thank I you thank so much. You, I thank you, my praise Lord. That's all I got to say now. I, I mean, Amen. I just thank God. He's so powerful. And I knew God yeah. had a man and not a come. I told him, y'all. I thought about a month or two ago, I got out the expectation that the gospel. I said, God, I got another calling for me. You know, I do be in the choir. You know, people feel like they can't sing, but guess what? God ain't looking for all that, how you sound. But you can serve them. Serve them. That's what he's going to serve them. Serve them. That's the God got me on a new phone. I don't know what it is. And I got it. But God got me on the phone. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. When I had Thank you so much. All the day. The evangelist, hallelujah, evangelism. That's right. I had to look at that. I had to look at that word. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the word. That's all. Well, I want to take a moment. Spread it. Spread it. Well, I want to take take a minute to thank Deacon Deacon Jordan and Sister Lyons for being willing. To to, to 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 testify and give praise reports tonight, and I want us, if you would, if, if all of us, you would be willing to just on your own. We won't report back all the time, but I want everybody to do what we learned. You know, the purpose of Bible study is to learn from it, and so we learned last week from David that it's important for the children of God to be constant and diligent in our in our recognition of what God has done and what God is doing. And so I challenge each of us to continue to try to keep you a it might be a notepad, it might be a napkin, it might be a notebook, whatever it is. Let's that's, that's, that's be diligent in, in trying to, to not only remember what God has done, but give him thanks out of our mouths. The Bible says in Hebrews, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto his name, giving praise to his name. Let us continue to do that so that we may be experiencing the very fullness of the power of God. One thing I learned <clears throat> during this week, and I said a little bit about it earlier, each day as I sought to um, write my list of prayers, Sometimes I remember stuff that I had that I had forgot. I literally had forgotten. And then there were some days, like I said, I remember stuff that as, as I was get, writing down what God had done, I became aware of some things that I didn't realize. I didn't even acknowledge it at the time, but I, I I was able to acknowledge what God had done during um during during my praise praise journal. And so I think it's important to 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 to, to if, if we not we got no time to do everything else. We can post, we can read, we can write, we can watch the news, and do all that. Let us each take time each day and take our time and jot down and write down what God has done for us so that then we can experience God in a whole new way. I believe it. I believe that Israel was blessed um, with the communion with God because of their um, their being on the, what the Levites want to do. I believe that Israel was blessed because it, it caused the children of Israel to praise God all the time. And I believe they were a stronger nation. And if you want to be a stronger Christian, Get your praise life in order. If you want to be strong, we want to be strong in church. Let us get our praise life in in place. There can't nobody, don't nobody need to help us praise God. But we are, we know what God has done for us. So I want to thank everybody for participating this week. Uh, and I would like for us to continue to do that, that we may grow in the Lord. We're going to finish up tonight the book of James chapter one. James chapter one. We're going to finish up that tonight. It's going to take me a little, just not not too long, just a few minutes. So indulge me tonight. And um, I think if I added up the time I stopped earlier this week, I have I have. 12 minutes of extra time. I'm going to go ahead and use those tonight, if you don't mind. In the book of James, chapter 1, <clears throat> uh, we have covered some bases in regards to the truth of our, the truth of our relationship with God. We've covered some bases, some bases, rather. So we've gone through verses 1 through 18, but watch, watch, watch what we do tonight. We're only going to cover, um, what, seven verses. I want you to watch this. At verse 19, James starts off by saying, wherefore. That's what he says. Whenever you see wherefore or therefore, what the author is, whether it's James or Paul or Peter, it doesn't matter who it is, what the author is saying is, as a result of what has been dis- described, as a result of what has been presented. So here's what here's what James is saying. James is saying, as a result of the fact that I'm writing to the people who are scattered abroad. And that word scattered, inherent in that word scattered, is there some problems. The reason why they were scattered because there was persecution and prosecution. So James is saying, I'm talking to some scattered folks, the per- folks who are under persecution and prosecution. That's what he says, hey. Then he says, but also I'm talking to folks who know that even the temptations and the tribulations are for your good. They're for your good. I want somebody to 
to hold on to that. I know you're in trouble, James is saying, but I know the trouble you're in is going to work to your good because of the presence of God. Then he moves on and says, I also want you to understand that I know that you are in tribulation, trials, uh, trying times, but I also know that you know that these trying times are for your good. And then he said, but I also want you to know that God is a good God, is the giver of every good and perfect gift. So that's three things James is making clear. So remember that in your life. We may live in trying times. That's, that's real. But we also know that for us, Christians, trouble perfects us. It's good for us. It, 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 it strengthens us, to put it like that. And, but we also know that God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. Now, James is saying in verse 19, because of that, here's what he's saying. He said, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. I love this right here. I, I wish I had more time. I really would take this a whole other place. He's saying so many of us in our lives get cynical. We complain about our situation. We complain about what happened. We, and that's why we've been talking about praise. Praise is so important because praise offsets complaining. But he says, instead of, as Christians, knowing that God's given of every good and perfect gift, knowing that, knowing that trial, trial is work, work is for you, and knowing that we live in a troubled world, it's almost like James said, listen here, God working on you. So instead of you complaining, he says, you ought to do something different. What, do you, what should I do, James? James says, instead of complaining, he says, be swift to hear and slow to speak and slow to wrath. Three things he says. Every one of us Christians, and this is instruction from the Lord, James delivered the mail to us. The Holy Spirit delivered to James, and James gave it to us. The, the, the Bible is saying that knowing what we know about the Lord, we should be swift to hear. What does that mean? That means sometimes, can I, can I pass it for a minute? We talk too much. We as Christians can be engaged in, 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 in talking and not hearing what God is saying. Now, let me be clear. Sometimes God is saying something through somebody. Sometimes God is speaking through his word. Sometimes through a sermon. But sometimes we talk all the way through and miss out on what God is saying. It may be something simple. I, have you ever been to, anybody ever been to the movies or watched a TV show or something and somebody next to you was just talking the whole time? You ever had, anybody had that happen and you couldn't focus because they just kept talking? They, and especially a long time ago before you could pause the movie. You just be sitting there like, I don't even know what they said because you're talking. Some of us do that. Some of us talk all the time. We don't give God a chance to speak to us. And so James says, don't talk so much. Be slow to talk. But then he says, but be swift to hear. The posture of the Christian is not always to have to say something. We ought, we ought to be listening to something because God may be speaking to us. Just like when we pray, there needs to be a time in our prayer. I think we talked about that last week. And I'm, I'm trying to implement that now. Not just to pray and get up and leave. We need to pray and then let God speak. And even if God says, hold on a little while longer, God has spoken. And we know that, we know that God will speak to us if we call on his name. So he says, be swift, swift, slow to speak. Swift to hear, slow to speak, and then it says slow to get ra- slow to wrath. Sometimes we allow our circumstances or our trials to cause us to be angry at somebody. That's a carnal thing. Can I be honest with you? That's that's the flesh. The flesh wants to blame it, something, everything on somebody. But the Bible says that's not what we should do. If if there's an issue, we should not turn around and get mad at at, at somebody or something. Instead, we should take a pause. Let me tell you a quick story about me. When I was in high school, I was in 11th grade. I was having a tough year. I got hurt in football, and a lot of stuff was happening. And I remember very vividly um, um, there was a guy playing football. He didn't really get in the game much, but um, for some reason at practice, I just, like, got mad. I was mad about the day. I got a D on the English test and didn't do well on the math test, and I went out there on the field. And he, I don't even know if he said anything to me. He said something. I just knocked him down. And he looked at me and said, what did I do? And I didn't know. I didn't have nothing to say. And one of the coaches saw me. And I said, what you not putting down for? I said, I don't know. He said, well, you're going you gonna to figure it out why you run the lap. I ain't never run a bunch of laps. And I thought to myself, and I said, that wasn't even, I didn't even get nothing out of that. I didn't feel good about hitting him. And I ended up getting punished for what I did. Here's what the Bible is in us know. Don't let anger, and we do this, don't let anger get the best of you. Because oftentimes, anger, just going to say this in the next verse, anger will be a setback for us. The Christians can't operate in anger. Wrath, wrath is like you just out of control man. That you just don't know what to do with yourself. And the truth is, I know very few people who can operate as a Christian in wrath. You can't know. Let me, let me change the map. Nobody can operate as a Christian in wrath. Very few people make good decisions when they're in wrath. So here's what he's saying. Don't do that. Be slow to the wrath. Be slow to be angry. Verse 20 tells us why. For the wrath of man working not the righteousness of God. If you're mad, you will not be able to do the will of God. Anybody been in a fight, just in a fight, when you were in that fight, 
no matter if it was right or wrong while you were fighting, you weren't operating God's will because the Bible says the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Our wrath and God's righteousness don't can't work together. They can't live in the same neighborhood. They can't they can't exist in the same person because we are mad about something in our flesh. God's righteousness can't be put forth for us. I um I know I told this story years ago, but I'll never forget it. Me and my dad were down here on um uh, ML King to be a Win Dixie over on ML King. And uh, and we were when Dixie and um uh, we were coming out yeah, we had like we looked like we had a Pontiac at the time, old school Pontiac and we were coming out the driveway and uh, my dad made a mistake and cut the man off and the man jumped out the car and started yelling and hooping and hollering at my dad and, and uh my dad I never forget, my dad said, Um, I'm sorry, Pastor Johnson and I, I felt so sorry for the man because he just he just he, he like he he shrunk. I'm sorry, I don't know why I talked because my dad recognized him my dad used to go to a lot of revivals. It was interesting. And and uh, when I got back in the car, and dad he was tripping. He said, Now son, um that's just an example. He said he's a man. He said, But I want you to be that's an example of how anger never plays out in your favor. And I remember that to this day. Um wrath is not I've done a lot of righteousness of God to 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 reign in us, to be revealed in us. And in the good news was my dad knew Pastor Johnson, there was no problem. But the reality is what if somebody was looking for Jesus? And they recognized him. What if somebody didn't know the Lord? So the important thing for us as Christians to remember is this. Let us be slow to wrath because wrath doesn't allow us to to to, be, to express the righteousness of God. Let's look at verse 21. Now, if, if we understand that, that, that being quiet and listening is important, being angry and hot in the collar and frustrated doesn't prove anything, it doesn't ever benefit us, he moves on to this next one and says, now, perhaps your problem is that 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 that, that – you can't hear. And this is what James is trying to tell us. Is we, in order for us to be strengthened during this season, go back to verse 12. In order for us to be to endure during the season, we got to have some communication with the Lord. And so in verse 21, he says, Wherefore, lay up our all filthiness and super, super, superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness and grafted words, which is able to save your soul. Two things. First of all, he said, put us out filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. In other words, um, words angry words, you know what I'm talking about, cuss words, put those aside. And then he says, and naughtiness. You know how somebody might not directly hurt somebody, but do something behind their back, do some kind of low down, you know, do some kind of spiteful and hateful. What what James is saying here is instead of doing either of those two things, he says, focus on receiving the meekness of God, um, the meekness of the word of God. Now, here's what he means. Two things. Put away what you say. Put away silly action. No, you know, when you're kid, it's naughty. That's naughty. Put away naughty stuff. Put away those things. He said, and, and, and instead, bring in, he said, meekness of the grafted word so we can receive it. Now, what this means is this. Receiving the word of God with meekness means one thing. It means that we come to God meek, understanding that we need what he's saying to us. That's what it means. So if anybody has ever had somebody come to you and say, I need your help, and the whole time you were talking, they weren't listening, or you told them what you – they asked you for help, and they look all puffed up, and they're like, I don't feel like hearing what you got to say, even though they came to you. That's what some of us do. God help us. And the minute God gives us direction out of his word, we be like, well, I ain't talking about that. The Bible here says that we need to receive the meek- with meekness the grasp the word. Meekness means power under control. That means that we're not coming to God wanting him to tell us what we want. We're coming to God so that he can tell us what he wants, what his will is. That's the key to being effective as a Christian. All of us that were ever children, all of us ever had children, know that the young folk make mistakes. And, and I tried to explain, this is somebody recently, young folk don't make mistakes because they're not smart. Young folk make mistakes, and, I, and the young is relative. It ain't about age, because some of us, 50, 60 years old, still make mistakes. It's about not being willing to, to subscribe to information or somebody who can help you. As a Christian, guess what? Every instruction that we need is not going to come from anywhere from the Word of God. You can, you, and if you've got a friend that gives you some advice, it should be based on the Word of God. So what he is saying here in verse um, twenty. One of chapter one. I'm sorry, verse twenty one of chapter one of James. He's saying, receive with meekness the engrafted word. And he moves on to say, the engrafted word is so powerful that it saves your soul. In other words, he's saying you ought to want to receive the word because it's God's direction and instruction. But more importantly, the word of God will save your soul. So anything that can save you in eternity can help you in time. Do we understand that right now? Anything that can save you in eternity will help you in time. And that's what James is saying. He said, children of God, don't don't get frustrated and angry. Instead, seek God's direction from his word. And when you get that, not only will you get the good direction, but it's ultimately going to lead you to the eternity with, to eternity with the Lord. 
Then he moves on. He says, now, when you get that word, look at verse 21, when he says, and receive with meekness and grasp the word. He says, verse 22, now, when you get that word, when God gives it to you, when he gives you your instruction, he said, don't just listen to it. So my verse 22 now, he said, but do it. He said, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Why, James? Because if you just hear it and don't do it, you're deceiving your own self because you're not going to get the outcome that God has prescribed. I got to tell this story one more time. I know I've told it before, but it just tickles me every time I think about it. Uh, when Noah was a little boy, he had this little, he was allergic to, um, to nickel. And you know how you have a pair of jeans on, you had a little piece in the back, and it broke him out all over his stomach. And so I remember not knowing what to do. We took him to the doctor, and the doctor gave this prescription. And you know, it might have been five or six. I don't know why I thought he knew how to follow the structure. He could read, but I didn't know. So I put, I gave him, I said, here's your prescription. And I, I went in there and, um, you know, laid down. And two, three days later, I came back and said, let me see your stomach. And I looked at his stomach, and he was still broken out. I said, um, why are you still broken out? He said, well, what do you mean? He said, I said, you got the prescription. He said, I know there it is right there. And I said, are you putting it on me? He's like, no, I didn't know I was supposed to put it on me. He said, I thought that just, once I got the prescription, it would be all right. And I had to laugh because he was a little boy. But the reality is many of us as Christians are doing the same thing. God gives us what we need, a prescription from his word, but instead of us adhering to it and applying it and doing it, we just listen to it, hear it, and don't apply it. And as a result, we deceive our own selves. In other words, no, no one could get rid of wrath because he put, put ointment on. Some of us can't get rid of whatever's going on in our lives because we're not ready to apply the word to our lives. And so James is saying it's really important, children of God, to be Hear us, do us of the word, and not just hear us, because doing it allows us to experience and, and have the benefits of the blessings that God prescribes in his word. Verse verse 23, he just makes a plain. He says, if you be a hearer of the word, if God is doer, it's like a man beholding his natural face in the glass. Verse 24, for he beholdeth himself, and he goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what man of man he was. In other words, if you just hear the word and don't do it, it's like a man looking in his mirror. And, and looks at himself. And when he walks away, he forgot what he looks like. That's what he's saying. That, think about how that is. You look at yourself in the mirror and you walk away like, what do I look like? That's, that's what happens when you don't, if you're a Christian and you're not doing the word of God. It is just that you're just a reader or a listener, but not an applier. That's what, that, that's what he says in verses 23 and 24. He says, but on the other hand, verse 25, whoever looks into the perfect law of liberty, the word of God, and continue within it in the word of God, he being not a forgetful hearer, but it does the word, this man shall be blessed in his deed. How about that? James says this right here. If you hear the word and you look into it and you walk in it, he says you won't forget God's word, but instead you will do his work and God will bless you. We always looking for a blessing. How about this? Verse 25 tells you how you get blessed. Right here. How you get blessed? Do the word of God. Do the will of God. Do the work of God, and God will bless you in what you do. That's clear. So somebody highlight that one. Verse 26, if any man among you seem to be religious and does not hold his tongue, but instead deceives his own heart, his religion is vain. In other words, if you play religious and you and you just if you just say what you want to say and act like you want to act with people, you, it's, they plan. That's what it's saying. They're playing. That, in other words, that's the hallmark of a Christian. A Christian ain't got to get the last word. A Christian ain't got to get somebody told. A Christian ain't got to get somebody straight. A Christian don't have to put somebody down. A Christian don't have to call nobody names. A Christian don't have to gossip and talk behind folks back. A Christian sometimes says, I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't going to say nothing because I ain't going to say nothing. I ain't, ain't going to say nothing because that's what the Lord would have me to do. And finally, he says, pure the religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this. What is James? To visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, to keep himself unspotted from the word. Let me characterize this and summarize this, verse 27. James is saying this. You want to, want to be a Christian? You want to live like a Christian? You want to be be, be presented before God? You want to be you want God to see you as a uh, as an undefiled believer? Here's what you got to do: do stuff for others, especially in that crisis, and then keep yourself unspotted from the world. Don't let the world affect you. And that's a challenge, but that's what was required of us. If somebody's in crisis, our job is not to talk about their crisis. Our job is to help them in that crisis. We talked about this earlier, even in the book of Ephesians, and we talked about it again in 1 Corinthians. If somebody's in crisis, our job as Christians is not to judge them, but to help them. Talk about it, Peter, too. Our job is to help them. And finally, don't let the world affect how you love the Lord, and don't let the world affect how you treat each other. I'm going to stop here tonight. I know we're about 15 minutes over, 14 minutes over. But I thank you for your time tonight, and I do pray that these words would not just uh, ring in our ears, but they would get in our ears. But I also pray these words would get in our hearts, that it would strengthen us. I pray that this word would get in our feet so that we can walk in it. 
I pray that this word would get in our mind so that's what we think about. And then I pray that the word of God would get in our mind so that we can declare the good news, this word, to the world, to each other, in the body of Christ, and to ourselves, that we may remind ourselves how to walk for the Lord, and that we may be encouraged in that. I thank God for all those on the, on the Zoom tonight. I thank God for all those on the phone tonight. And I pray that God will richly bless every household that is represented here tonight. Let us pray together. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight, Lord, for the testimonies that were given. We thank you, Lord, for the power that you continue to exhibit in the lives of all those who love you. I pray, God, tonight that you bless households. Just, I'm going to ask you, God, to just rain down grace and mercy and joy and peace in all the households that are represented here tonight, Lord. I pray that somebody might have been thinking and worried about something tomorrow, Lord, but I pray that you would take that worry away and you would speak to their souls and say, it's going to be all right because I got it under control. Do that, please, tonight, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, this word would just work in us. That it will work in us. It will work in us, and your word would have its full work in us, that we may be effective, Lord, in being examples of this world for you. We may be satisfied in our relationship with you, and we may be uh, edified those, Lord, who you sent us to serve. God, I pray that you bless, uh, uh, let your word again. I pray it again that you let your word get in our hearts, our feet, our mouths, our tongues, our minds, that we may be transformed. It is in Jesus' name, God, we so love you. And I thank you again tonight for the testimony of Deacon Jordan and Sister Lyons. Bless them for being willing to stand. And bless all, Lord, those who have, who, have, who have thought diligently about praising you for all that you've done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hold on, Bill.